Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today we'll be talking Justin Fields versus Zach Wilson, talking pros and cons of each and all that fun stuff. And before we get started today, I just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary NY. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever it is that you get your podcasts. So yesterday, the New York Jets traded Sam Darnold to the Carolina Panthers for a sixth rounder this year, a second and a fourth in 2022. We talked about the initial reaction yesterday. Don't worry, there'll be more Sam Darnold fallout throughout the rest of the week. But now, things that we have to talk about is what is the plan now? And with the number two pick, the New York Jets will be drafting a quarterback. And more likely than not, it's going to come down to these two players. So let's talk about them. Zach Wilson measured in at six foot two, 210 pounds. He's 21, turning 22 years old on August 3rd. So he'll be 22 for the 2021 season. And there's a lot to like, and there are a few things to be concerned about, just like with any prospect, but we're going to go through them together and talk it out and see which one we want at the end. So start with the pros. Arm angles is a huge thing. The reason why he draws the Pat Mahomes comparisons, which I think is a bit much, I understand the arm angle stuff is exciting, but to compare anyone to Pat Mahomes, I think is a stretch. Uh, but his playmaking ability and his ability to make throws from just about any position is what... I think could make him special at the next level and why he draws those Pat Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers uh, comparisons. Is it lofty expectations? Of course it is, but it's hard not to get excited about those kinds of throws on the field. So I get it to an extent, but I just also want you to pump the brakes because expecting someone to come in here and put up Pat Mahomes numbers right away is uh, crazy. He's the best quarterback in football. Another pro is he doesn't really turn the ball over. So he had three interceptions in 12 games last year, three as a freshman. In his sophomore year, that number was up a little bit. He had nine. That's when he was recovering from his shoulder injury. More on that later. But he really got that under control in year three. And we saw in his rookie year that he isn't someone who is going to turn the ball over a lot. Ball security is an issue with Sam Darnold uh, at this point in his career. So this and Justin Fields alike, for the most part, should be able to avoid those kinds of turnovers. Next up is arm strength. You have to love this guy's arm strength. Is it better than Justin Fields? No, but it is very, 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 very good. He can get the ball down the field, as we saw from his pro day and throughout his collegiate career at BYU. Um, and he could throw outside the pocket, which is something that I really love in a quarterback. Uh, that's something that Sam Darnold did very well. Um, but it's an element that I fully expect to be used in this San Francisco style of offense that the New York Jets are going to be running. So I think, you know, that fits perfectly for what the Jets are trying to do. And that's one of the assets of a player like Zach Wilson. He also can run. And granted, he's not Justin Fields and running the ball. Uh, he's not Lamar Jackson running the ball. But he is better than I think people give him credit for. Um, he can make some guys miss. He has sneaky good speed. Again, not anything super flashy, but he, he's a fine runner. I would say even above average runner um, and better than Sam Darnold, who I think was a little bit underutilized the last two years running the ball because Adam Gase isn't a smart coach, but uh, someone who could run RPOs if need be. Another thing that comes to mind is accurate. He can place the ball wherever he wants, so that's why he kind of trusts his arm and makes those gutsy kind of gunslinger-like throws, but because he is accurate, he can get away with it. Um, does that translate to the next level? We'll have to see, but accuracy at the college level was very, very good and I think has a good chance of progressing at the next level with the right coaching staff. And my last pro is good processor. He reads the field well, um, and he's able to make good decisions and go through his reads. Now, like every prospect, no one is perfect, so we're gonna talk about the cons. Level of competition comes to mind at BYU. Obviously, he's not playing against great schools. You could flip that and make the argument that he elevated talent on his roster because he was playing with a bunch of Mormons who went away and then are like 26 years old coming back to play college football. Um, it's a unique situation from where he's playing, but level competition is definitely something to come to keep in mind. And it's something that Jay Drew talked about when I had him on the channel as well, talking about him uh, and his just overall level of competition that he played at BYU. Past injuries is also something that's going to come up. The shoulder is fine after this year. Is it a red flag? I guess a little bit like any kind of injury is going to be a little bit of a red flag. If it happened this past year, that's a little bit of a different story. But from everything I hear, that's fine. The injury issues isn't isn't a concern with him at this point. And 
ironically, the argument for most people who wanted to keep Sam Darnold was that Zach Wilson's injured, which Sam Darnold was injured in his first three years in the league, or one of the times he had mono. But he missed three-plus starts each of his first three years in the league. Um, and the last con is he played from really good pockets, and it had great protection. Uh, he was not under pressure a lot, so would he be able to handle that going to the NFL where teams are going to be able to get pressure and he's not going to have pockets to throw uh, like he did in college? Who knows? But those three things to me jump out as what the cons could be for Zach. Okay, let's transition and talk about Justin Fields, 6'3", 228. He is 22 years old. Pros, huge arm. He's very accurate, but the arm strength is jumping off the page good. He has a very good arm. He's better in the pocket as well than people give him credit for. Like, everyone sees him and say, oh, he's a physical specimen, which he is. He has 4'4 speed, which is very rare in a quarterback, and they think run first he's gonna want to run 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 and which is true he can run and run very very well he's better in the pocket than some people give him credit for also his toughness is super underrated what he was able to do in that clemson game was phenomenal he outdueled trevor lawrence first of all second of all just being able to take all those hits those shots of the ribs come back in on that drive and march your team down the field and score a touchdown was really impressive and he played a big time performance had a lot of big time throws and i know some people are going to bring up the northwestern game some people are going to bring up you know other games that were on their schedule indiana i don't think he played great against um so those those names are going to come up here and against some of those solid defenses but in a big spot and a huge stage, he went toe to toe with Trevor Lawrence, who is a generational talent. And like, that's another thing with Justin Fields too. He's been talked about at such a high level for a long time. It was him and Lawrence coming out as the number one A and one B prospects out of high school, quarterback prospects out of high school. And they both lived up to the hype. They've been very, very good. In 2019, Fields' this season was incredible. 41 touchdowns to just three interceptions, had a yards per attempt of 9.2. This past year, only played eight games, 22 touchdowns, six interceptions, 9.3 yards per attempt. Interceptions went up a little bit. Uh, you had a couple uh, games where that seemed like a little bit of an issue. But overall, you look at what he did at the college level, very, very productive very productive and is someone who is worthy of a top five pick. Now, I've talked about this on the channel. I talked about it on a past mock draft. I th personally think that he is not going to be the third quarterback off the board, even though he is my third quarterback in this class. I just have this hunch that San Francisco is going with Trey Lance and going to sit him behind Jimmy G for a year. That's just my feeling on it. I could be wrong. I think Justin Fields would be great there, and I think he is going to be very good in the NFL. That's just my take on it. But he is absolutely someone who is worthy of a top five pick. And ironically, the top three guys, in my opinion, Lawrence, Wilson, Fields, all three of those guys are number one overall pick like talent. So yeah, he's very, very good also. Now for the cons, because there are cons. Again, we talked about it with Zach Wilson. Nobody is perfect. And a lot of times online, it's either you're a Justin Fields guy and he's the greatest thing ever and he has no flaws and Zach Wilson played against awful competition and blah, blah, blah. And then if you're a Zach Wilson guy, then Justin Fields stinks and you can't have it both ways. When in reality, like both of these prospects are very, very good and absolutely worthy of the number two picks, but they do have cons. He does hold on to the ball for a very long time, Justin Fields. And some people think that he is slow processing, which I, I see it, um, and I do think he holds on to it. I think his internal clock is just a little bit slow. Is that fixable? I would say yes, but it is a little bit of a red flag. Like that, There are cons, and that to me is one. And the last con that I think is baloney is that he's an Ohio State quarterback, and that always comes back, and you get that thrown in your face. Well, oh, Ohio State, who do they produce? And then you can go right down the line. Give me a Texas Tech quarterback before Pat Mahomes. Give me a Wyoming quarterback before Josh Allen. Give me a Wisconsin quarterback before Russell Wilson. Like, I hate the the idea that you have to grade the school or you hold against where he went to school as a part of the evaluation process. Don't evaluate the helmet. That's my favorite phrase. Don't evaluate the helmet. Don't evaluate the uniform. Look at what the individual does. And to me, Justin Fields 
proved in his collegiate career that he is better than the last guy out in Dwayne Haskins. And Fields' head is on much more straight than Dwayne Haskins, clearly. And Fields is a much better leader than Dwayne Haskins. That's been put on display already. So realistically, I think, and for good reason, either one of these players could be the pick at two, and you should be okay with either one of these two players at, at two. Coming down to the point where we're making decision time, if it were up to me, if I'm making the call, it's Zach Wilson. I believe the Jets are going to go that route. All signs seem to be pointing that direction, but I don't think you can sit here today and say there's a 0% that it's going to be Justin Fields. You can't, and I think he would be worthy of that pick, so I just kind of wanted to make this more for, I think, the people who think that, one, I'm just a strictly Zach Wilson guy. I think Fields is awful, and that the Zach Wilson stands, which there are, and I guess I'm part of them, who think Justin Fields is a really bad prospect. And on the flip side, the Fields guys who want no part of Zach Wilson. It's not about that. Both these players are really good. I just happen to like Zach Wilson a little bit more, and I personally think that's the way the Jets are going to go. So you let me know in the comments below which one you prefer and which direction you think the New York Jets are going to go. Sound off in the comments or on social media. Make sure to subscribe if you are new. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.